Grand Tierra is a company that's been around over 10 years. Uh, myself, the management team that are currently in place, the board of directors are all new. We were brought in about four years ago to refocus the company uh, on, on Colombia. The company had been exploring in Peru and Argentina and Brazil and in Colombia. And our, our real, real focus with, with Colombia is uh, back on full cycle oil and gas. And, and we've been at it. We've, we're, we're very excited about where we're at and we're very excited to be at Grand Tierra. Colombia, uh, in, in particular, has a, a long history, decades of, of fiscal stability and, and having great contracts in terms of, of being able to, to invest and confidently uh, get the kind of returns that you're looking for when, when you start in the country. Uh, the second thing is, is the basins are, are proven in terms of hydrocarbon with multiple targets, multiple horizons to explore for. And, and the final is uh, it doesn't matter how much oil or gas you find if you cannot get it to market. And in Colombia, whether it's oil or gas, there's multiple ways to get your, your product to market and, and get best price. We, we get a, a Brent uh, benchmark pricing and having the fiscal stability, having proven ability to explore and find oil and gas, and then produce it once you, you find it, it, it works great. The, the, the second country, Ecuador, which we just entered, is really just an extension of the Putumayo Basin in, in southwestern Colombia. A uh, very large prolific basin, over six billion barrels have been produced just across the border. Um, and why now, why Ecuador now? It, it's the first time in, in a couple of decades that the attractive terms have been offered. Uh, something outside of service, service terms, more conventional oil and gas. You find oil, you develop it, you produce it, and you, you book it as a, as, as a commodity that investors and ourselves are looking for that we can measure ourselves. The, the execution strategy is, is full cycle. So the, the first part of that cycle is, is exploration. We, we find oil and we know what we're looking for in terms of size, in terms of, of quality, in terms of productivity, and it's all conventional. Uh, everything we're doing is conventional sandstone and conventional carbonates in, in these basins. Uh, the, the second part is once you find it is, is to very economically develop it and produce it. Um, that later stage, uh, a lot of our assets we've acquired, and we'd ac we acquired those back in 2015, 16, 17, uh, when we, we first joined the company, uh, and, and oil prices were at 30, 40 dollars a barrel, but in our view, not sustainable. And so we saw it as a, as a great opportunity to, to, to bring quality assets into the company but also the exploration lands. Uh, how, do we, how do we try to distinguish ourselves in, in, in the development side and the production side? We focus from inception on enhanced recovery. Uh, simple water flooding, uh, gas reinjection techniques, uh, horizontal drilling when required. Uh, and so our, our, our start on a, on a development, e even if it's a brand new field, is we jump straight to the enhanced recovery uh, techniques. Uh, I'll combine that with a three to five times return return on equity. We, we use a five-year window and we don't look quarter to quarter. Uh, we don't necessarily look year to year. We look over a five-year term what is the best value for, for shareholders. So we pre-invested in one of our biggest fields, the Acordonero field in the middle Magdalena Valley. Uh, we pre-invested uh, $200 million on development wells, on water injection uh, wells, supply wells, on facilities to produce up to 30,000 barrels of oil a day or 40 or 50,000 barrels of fluid a day 
uh, well before we needed that. And so you, you don't get a, a quarterly return on that. You don't get an annual return. It's over a, a two year period. We just finished that project and it, it's a great example of now we'll start moving our, our possible and probable reserves into proven and turn those into production. We're, we're just starting to ramp that, that production up and we'll, we'll, uh, our, our shareholders will start seeing those returns over the next year. You hear the acronym a lot today of ESG, environmental, social, and governance. And you cannot operate in instead of areas in the world, and we don't operate in any area in the world without doing the right thing. So uh, even before the acronym became popular over the last, last couple of years, we were working with Conservation International, reforestation projects in the sensitive Putumayo region where you get clear cutting of, of forests for uh, illegal crop growth uh, in, in terms of uh, what does that do to the environment? It causes erosion, it causes all kinds of problems. Uh, the, the, the second thing that, that we do uh, is, is try to give back to society, uh, whether that's micro loans helping entrepreneurs start businesses, using local businesses for uh, civil works that where we can, uh, creating jobs. We, we impact over 90,000 people with our social investments in, in Colombia and we hope to do the same in, in Ecuador now that we're in Ecuador.